Hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome to another live stream. Really appreciate you guys coming on. I've really enjoyed doing these live streams uh, in the past year or several months uh, in the time I've been doing them. It's always exciting, it's always fresh, and um, I get to do what I love, and that's to teach people, to help them, to inspire them, um, to make them feel good about themselves, uh, to help them with their confidence, all those things, and to have some fun along the way. And also, it helps me to help other people and to help you guys. So, in this um, live stream, I'm going to be talking to you about um, your inner self. I'm going to be explaining what the inner self is as I go through the talk, the lecture. Um, for those of you who don't understand it, for those of you who do, that's great because you're on the same page. And I'm also simultaneously going to be teaching you and explaining to you and sharing with you everything I know about how to attract a beautiful girl into your life or a beautiful woman. And I'm also going to be teaching you how to love your life, how to enjoy your life. So all these things are gonna, gonna connect and I'm gonna answer your questions as well as we go along. And um, I'm looking forward to it because I don't know everything that I'm gonna say, but I know what I'm gonna say. It's gonna come out naturally. All I have to do is be honest, tell the truth and share. And I'm sure that's gonna be very helpful for you as well. It's also gonna be, um, I'm guessing that, the things I'm going to say are going to be inspiring, but they're going to be challenging. They are going to challenge you, and they're going to challenge me as well. But without a challenge, there, there's no um, – you wouldn't appreciate it, you know, no pain, no gain. So um, we're going to be going very deep, and um, it's going to be a good one. So welcome to the live stream. Thanks for coming on. Let me know where you're from. I'm curious to know what part of the world you're from. Uh, how you doing, Trolley? I get people from all around the world and it, it still fascinates me now in the eight years that I've been teaching, coaching, and I've coached people and worked with people from all around the world that have come over to London and they've done my two-day program or some people have come to London and worked with me for seven days in a row. Some have done a six weeks program. So it's been um it's been an it's been an incredible I don't know what you can call it. It feels like a, it has been a journey, has been like an ongoing ride. And there's also been challenges as well along the way. It's been difficult, but all in all, it's been it's hard to put into words. It's been exciting. So I was walking today and um, I was feeling really peaceful and relaxed. You know, when you get those moments where it just naturally happens. And I think I know what happened. And then for some reason, the word inner self comes to me. And I thought, I really like that name. It's really simple. And I think most people will understand it, the clue is in the title, inner self, you know, in your inner self, something deeper, some, the truest part of you, who you really are, who you really want to be. And that connects with um, achieving something amazing in life, something that is of value to you. It could be anything. It could be boxing. It could be weightlifting. It could be going out speaking to them and attracting them in the daytime it could be making money it could be helping people it could be doing public speaking it could be spending time with your mum your dad your brother your sister your friends all those um places love hey martin how you doing hey ali how you doing my friend hey anderson hey uh Betty garcia so the inner self is really um love it's about that self-love that is within every single man every person so I thought about that and then I sat down and started doing some writing because I, I do like to write. I love to write, actually, um, when it feels right to write. And I started writing about the inner self. And first of all, um, I was kind of coming from a place of um, passion and frustration. I was just writing like most of the mistakes that people make. Hi, Johnny. I sent you a song about a year ago, Search for Yourself by John Lucian. Do you know what? That's really kind of you. I think I remember that you sent me that. And I either listened to a bit of it or I got distracted and, and didn't listen to it. So if I didn't listen to it, I'm apologizing. I, I, but I do remember you sending it. Um, so that's interesting. That's such a coincidence that you sent that song in, in, in today. And um, 
So as I started to write out on paper, it was a bit like a, like a confession. I was kind of confessing, um, you know, the kind of self-dishonesty in most people, even in myself, even if it's my past self. And then as I was writing it, it was like an exorcism. I was getting through all the bullshit, all the fears. And then it, it became really loving, really caring. And I connected to my inner self. And then I actually made a Facebook Live that seems to be popular. And I spoke really deeply about it, even in Jer Jeremy. So first thing I want to start with, um, let, let's, let's delve into the negativity. Let's go right into the dark stuff, because that's what it's about, finding your inner self. But as glamorous and beautiful and poetic as it sounds, and it, and it is, it ain't easy to get to. I've got to be honest with you guys, even when I teach it to people on my six weeks program, that doesn't mean it can't be enjoyable. It's the most enjoyable thing you'll ever do, but it's going to be difficult at times. It's like anything in life. You're going to, there's going to be periods where it's going to be very, very um, overwhelming and fearful and stressful. So to get to that inner self, obviously it's something that's inside everyone. So it's, it's not something that you don't have or you're not good enough. But it's finding it, it's accessing it, it's awakening, awakening it or connecting to it. I'm using all these different words to describe the same thing because everyone might understand different things that I'm saying, but it's the same truth. So to find that love in ourselves, to find that true confidence, to find that abundance, to find that woman, to find that business, to find that friend that you want to meet, to find that piece of art that you want to create or anything, you you've got a, you have to you have to look at your darkness. And what I wrote today was most people, I say most, I say a lot of people, equally as a lot of people who do, but a lot of people, the general consensus or the main level of consciousness in society is denial. People constantly um, complain about other people. They constantly moan about politics. They constantly get angry. They constantly complain that they don't like their job. They don't like the way their boss is treating them. Their boss is bad. Their boss is this. Their boss is that. Um, and it's not saying that these things ain't going on. They're not true. But we're going to go deeper in a second. That's like the worst truth a human being can have because the better truth is change your job. But to change your job, you've got to change yourself. You've got to look at yourself. You've got to go into your inner self because the part of you that hates your job, the part of you that hates your boss, the part of you that is getting bullied and manipulated by your boss um, is the part of you that's not who you really are. Uh, you know, so it's aligning to the part of you that says, you know what, I'm not happy with my job. I don't like the way the boss treats me. He is dishonest. He is manipulative. He is abusive. He doesn't make me feel good. Um, and a big excuse people will say, but I can't leave my job because it pays well. That's another, that's where you're not working on your inner self. Brutal honesty is going, yeah, it pays well, but for the money that I'm making, what is it giving me? It's giving me hell. It's making me suicidal. It's making me depressed. It's making me hate people. It's making me hate myself. And obviously, no one with any intelligence wants to be in a place of hate and anger and all that. So it's going, I'm going to take that leap of faith. I'm going to, not in, not in some weird way or not in some, um, you know, airy fairy spiritual way really a strong um you know strength true strength you're going to go i'm going to quit the job and i'm going to risk having um a reduction in um in uh, in my pay i'm going to trust that i'm going to do the right thing and then when you quit your job you feel so much better because you're not getting abused by a boss no more you're not around people like that and then all of a sudden because you're loving yourself more and you're facing your fears externally, you're starting to feel more connected. And then you obviously, you attract a better boss, a nicer boss, or you run your own company, you become your own boss, and then you attract amazing clients. And then you're saying, I can't believe how kind my new friends are, my new client is, because you worked on your inner self. So the inner self is a direct connection with the our life that we see every day. Um, it, they're both connected. So when I'm saying working on inner self, I am talking about going in spiritually and doing the inner workings, but I'm also talking about going outside and doing the outer workings. So that's just some of the examples that I read. 
Now we're going to move on to women. Now, this is a common story. I used to have this story. I don't have this story anymore. I used to believe this. I used to feel this. I don't believe it. I don't feel it anymore. I've healed. A common story from men, and I get it a lot on the live streams. And again, I'm not saying that it's not going on. I'm not saying it hasn't happened to you, but it's the worst truth for you possible is can't trust any women. Um, all women are bitchy. All women are gold diggers. Um, all of them um, go for looks. All of them go for guys of money. All of them um, are um, nasty and unkind. That story, you have to look at it. You have to be really honest and go, well, why do I feel that way about women? If you do feel that way, what what's making me feel like that? Okay, in your childhood, maybe one or two girls were nasty to you and rejected you, and that's hurt you and made you angry and feel that way. But not every single woman is like that. Because when I look at my life, I attract the most kindest women. I'm dating a really kind woman now who's not who's not dishonest with me. I haven't seen any of that so far. Who is not abusing me? Who's very kind, very genuine, um, giving me um, amazing sex, sending me very kind messages, um, uh, being uh, supportive, and um, not after my money or trying to um, manipulate me. Um, but the reason why I've got a woman like that in my life because I'm not manipulating women. I'm not being abusive to women. I'm not hating women. I'm, I'm loving. I'm being kind. And I'm getting back what I'm giving. So you really have to start looking at what you're giving. And most people don't want to do that. They're, they're looking at what people are not giving them. And they're angry about that and frustrated. So a lot of men I mentor, a lot of you that come, come to my live streams, you're very angry at what women are not giving you. You're angry that women are not loving you. You're angry that they're not sleeping with you. You're angry that they're not going on dates with you. You're angry that they're flaking on you. But you're not looking at the way you're treating them. Because there will be a direct correspondence if you, you're experiencing this sort of it's because that's how you treat yourself. You might not even realize it. You might not even be treating your mum right. You might not even be um, valuing your own family. You might not be treating your friends like that. And I know this, it can, it does sound Gandhi-like, be the change that you want to see loud, and it can sound almost unrealistic. And that's fair enough, but it's the truth. When we look at it on a raw practical level, it's the truth. And I know because I've done these inner workings and I've got the results in my life, which is why you guys have been attracted to come to my videos. Uh, and I suppose it's a bit like, um, and I fall into this sometimes as well, it's a bit like saying, well, you know what? Everyone online is a troll. Every, everyone's nasty online. Everyone's abusive. If I buy that story then and I keep feeding that and complaining and getting angry, and everyone's going to troll me online. But the real truth is most people online are very kind to me. All you guys are really genuine with me and very loving and caring. And that's because that's how I treat you. That's how I treat you in the videos that I make. That's how I treat, that's how I treat you if you come to my talk. Uh, in most cases, if you stop me on the street and I don't know you and you're kind to me, I'll be kind to you. So we get consistently what we're given. In most cases, I'm not saying that when we're good people and we're doing good, that there's not going to be people out there that are going to be nasty. Of course, that's going to happen. They're great. But generally, on a wide spectrum, so it's about um, not feeding stories and not, you know, not neglecting your inner self because I worked to myself. So 13 years ago, this was my um, relationship with myself. This is how, this is me speaking out loud back then. Um I fucking hate people, so I choose bad language. They're all cunts. I can't trust men. They're sneaky. They're manipulative. Um, people always try and abuse me. Um, I don't want to trust people. I don't like people. Um, people are judging me. I'm paranoid around people. All this was because I, I was um, damaged when I was younger, and that was my <clears throat> pain, anger towards people, social anxiety. But what I didn't realize until a bit later on was I wasn't treating people well. I was being aggressive when people were being around me. I wasn't being friendly. I wasn't being, obviously I wasn't not being like all the time. So of course um, I was going to attract people like that. I was going to, you know, but when I worked to myself, um, I did a 360 turn and all of a sudden it's the real part of me is actually most people in general, are really nice people. And I really love people and I really care about people. 
and I really want to help people and I really just want to have friendships and just get along with people. And here I am now um, having a good relationship, I would say, with pretty much all of you, all of you on the live stream and most of you. Um, I've got a great relationship and I, I hear of a lot of other people complaining that their followers attack them or they get critics and I get a little bit of that but it's so small I get so much love and support so it's because I've worked on my inner self it's because I've done that work I've gone into myself and done that therapy and what I spoke about today is that a lot of people don't want to admit to their inner darkness and I've got news for you Every single one of us has got a tyrant in us. Every single one of us has got a dark, aggressive, angry, violent uh, shadow. You shouldn't, there's nothing to be ashamed of your human. We've all got that. It's, you can't escape that. But we've also got the inner self, which is very beautiful and very loving and very genuine. And it's completely the opposite to that. So you've got to have the courage to look at that. And most people don't have the courage to look at that. They're just projecting out. They just say, they hate their job, they hate their area. Um, a common story, people will say, um, you know, certain, like I said earlier about women, you know, these women are gold diggers, these women just want your money, these women just come to this country to use you. But then it's, it's really questioning, why do you feel that way? How comes that's not happening to me? How comes that's not happening to my good friend? How comes he's got a lovely, beautiful girlfriend who's not using him and who's kind to him? So you have to really see the better truth in the world and see it in yourself if you want to live a better life, which I know you guys do, and you want to succeed with women. Otherwise, you're just going to be in this place of darkness, depression, and um, you'll always find the convenient excuse not to work on yourself. Um, yeah, um, the chat ended. That wasn't my fault. That was a glitch. So I'm going to take some questions soon. So. We're talking about here doing the inner work, and this is the work that I do, that I've done for a long time with the clients that work on my six-week transformation program. I mean any program, even the live streams or the weekend boot camp. So this is the work that I continue to do, and it's difficult work, but it's so rewarding. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say is you, you've, got to, you've got to change yourself. You've got to work on yourself, and you, what you'll find is as you start to get better results with women, it, you may not even notice this, but I'll remind you of it. You will notice that you are actually becoming a better person, generally speaking. So the more honest you are, the more congruent, the more loving, the less you're being dishonest and going into your addictions, the more women are gravitated towards you because your level of, you're, you're just the more loving, you're more confident, you're more loving, you're more nice to be around and they're attracted to that. So, have the courage to do the work. Do the work that most people won't do. And then you'll be in places where most people won't be. So this is how I got to the, the an elite world level of coaching and teaching and grew um, a worldly following and changed so many people's lives because I did that inner work. Um, no, I haven't. <laughs> I didn't wear the vest. To continue from yesterday I'm, I'm wearing it because i'm comfortable in it and it's and it's nice and it's new um so there's no there's no there's not any particular reason for that so i just wanted to get a feel do you guys understand what i'm talking about and i think what a lot of guys try and do is they go out on the street in the daytime and this is still it's still a good step obviously and they approach women and they approach hoping they'll get lucky or some girl will sleep with them but they don't do enough inner work, yeah? So if you want great results with women and you want to get the very best results possible, so you're not cutting corners, you're not running from yourself, you're not being dishonest, then you've got to do the inner work. And the inner work is, there's many ways, and I'm just giving you a lot of examples so you guys can really get this and start practicing this. I mean, to a certain degree, you are doing the inner work now. Just listening to my talk, that's the inner work. Because a lot of people couldn't even listen to me now. They'd get angry, they'd walk off. I've had it many times. I've had it where, not loads, where I might be doing a public talk outside into a, for a group of guys and people like it. And passerby, strangers walk by and they're kind of looking, what's going on here? They stop for a bit. I start talking about working on yourself, becoming more honest, facing fears. 
they walk away straight away. They don't want to hear it. It triggers them. It makes them angry. It makes them feel judged. It makes them feel exposed. So it is about exposing the darkness in you I and mean, converting the darkness over to light, to love. It's basically about all your anger, all your jealousy, dealing with that stuff and um, transmuting it into love or, or, or um, you know, motivation. So pornography. If you keep going on to porn sites because you are suffering with social anxiety or depression or you're struggling with self-esteem issues, you're struggling to approach women, you can't speak to them, you don't know how to talk to them, you're not getting the results that you want. If you keep working on, uh, if you keep watching porn, sorry, you just destroy yourself. You disconnect from your inner self. If you practice discipline, I know it's hard when you are addicted to things like porn because I've had that addiction myself and I've, um, abstain from it and beat it. It can be difficult when you're in the midst of it because it's the only thing that's giving you a bit of satisfaction in your life. But you've got to look at the damage that it's doing in the long run. And it's no coincidence. The part of you that goes on and watches porn will be the same part of you that feels the need to judge people, get angry, get angry at women, blame, lie, cheat, manipulate. So if you start watching porn, you'll connect more to your inner self. And of course, like I said, there is a period where we have to go through a lot of pain. We have to experience a lot of emotional pain from our childhood. Um, just looking at our demons, it's a painful process, but no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain, sorry. And for the pain that you go through, in proportion to what you get after, it's worth it. You're going to get so much uh, happiness, uh, inner peace, love, and exterior results. Your finances will improve. You'll get on better with people. You'll, you'll like people more. You'll start seeing things in a more positive way. Um, you, you won't understand um, how you could have been watching porn in the past, how you could be so angry and judgmental. You, you'll just be like, how, how did I used to be like that? That's what happened to me. I look back at my life. I was like, how could I treat people like that? I could never do that now. I used to get high on drugs in my 20s and walk into a nightclub with so much anger and aggression, just waiting for a guy to look at me, just look at me the wrong way and then punch him in the face and then knock him out or get into fights over nothing because I was angry at myself because I was struggling in my life. And then when I made changes, I was like, I can't, I don't recognize that person because that wasn't who I was. And I was well disconnected from my inner self. And it's a shock when I look back and go, I can't believe that I used to regularly go and, and pay uh, escorts for sex uh, and spend all my wages as a postman on, on prostitutes and then, and then go away and think, why am I doing that? And feel ashamed and suicidal and lonely and, and more socially anxious and more paranoid around people. When I um, started to go out and develop myself in the daytime of meeting and attracting women and building more self-esteem and healing more, and, and developing myself and facing my fears of public speaking and my fears of making money and my fears of meeting new people and teaching, I, I stopped doing that. I stopped going and paying prostitutes for sex and then I look back on it and say, I can't believe that I ever did that. I, I, no, now I'd never need to do that. I'm so grateful for that. Or I, I can't believe that I used to spend hours on end with negative friends talking bad about people behind their back and being really nasty and, and spending hours what 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 inspired me to do that? How could I do that? But I did do it. So it is about looking at the hideous things in ourselves that we've all done or we're all doing. Uh, and this is ongoing work, and I'm still developing myself. But it's so tasty. It's so beautiful. It's such a place of strength. And you'll realize how weak you've been, even if you think you've been strong. Because people think they're strong to go online and to say nasty things about people or to threaten them. But most people would never do that in, in the person's face. I've had occasional people threaten me and say nasty things about me that are not true. And when I've said to them, well, listen, you feel so strongly about what you're saying about me and you're threatening me. Why don't we meet in person and talk about it man to man? I'll even buy you a coffee or a tea and we can sit down and, you know, we can talk about why you've got such an issue with me. Why me putting out videos, helping people to develop their confidence is, is infuriating you but they never meet you in person because they don't have any courage. They're very, they're weak spiritually. So you don't have to be weak spiritually. You don't have to have a terrible relationship with yourself and a terrible relationship with women. You can change it. You can have a beautiful relationship with yourself and women. 
Um, but you've got to do the inner work. You've got to take responsibility and stop blaming everyone. And if the miracles happen, it really is incredible how much of how much how much different you feel. And you'll be able to reflect and look back and forgive yourself and heal up and and stop feeding these negative addictions. So I'm going to stop for a second because I've gone deep. And I just want to get like, an, I just want to see if you guys, if this makes sense, are you guys getting this? And if you've got any questions or anything you didn't understand, uh, please ask me and I'm going to answer it for you. Or if there's anything you want me to talk about, particularly with regards to women confidence and developing your inner self, then ask me. I'm happy to answer it for you. Well, you said, hey, mate, how to attract a girl when you're fat uh, and ugly uh, and, and, you know, and your your skin color. Um, you've got to stop treating yourself like that. So, again, that part of you that just wrote that, I know that's not really you. That's not really your, that's not your inner self. That's your anger. That's your shadow. That's your aggression. So you have to um, heal from this and stop calling yourself ugly when you're not ugly. And then you will attract a beautiful girl because you'll become beautiful. You'll become what you want. So you guys got, you guys got to become what you want. If you're saying that it's such an, un, it's so unfair and people are not nice to me and they're not kind, if you start being nice and kind to people, then you're, then you're going to meet people that are going to be nice and kind to you. So, you know, this is a great, I'm really enjoying this session because I can feel it's going to challenge a lot of you. And it, and it challenges me when I say it. Because when I'm telling you guys all this, I have a couple of voices going off in my head, like laughing at me. These are like stuff in the past saying, you know, kind of like, who am I to be telling other men about love and, and in improving themselves? But I'm the best example to do that because I used to be in that dark place. I used to be a nasty person, an aggressive um, not because I was a bad person deep down. I was always a good person. I had a good heart, but because things were done to me and I was responding. So, um, this is just, this is how it works. By the way, when I'm talking about being more loving and honest, that doesn't mean that you let people walk all over you. That doesn't mean you become a doormat. It doesn't mean that you let people abuse you. No, when you connect your inner self, you're even more stronger. People do try to, you're welcome, Mostef. If people try to take liberties or people try to disrespect you, you stand up for yourself. That, that's, that's part of being congruent and being strong. It doesn't mean that you're a sheep who just walks about loving everyone and letting people um, disrespect them. So, of course, personal boundaries. But the better truth is saying, that the more loving you are, the more you right the wrongs in you, the more you're going to see that in the world, the more you're going to see that in your life, the more people you're going to meet that are also in that place as well. I'm sure you guys have done it. I'm sure you've been online or you've seen someone, um, whether it's me or someone else, and you've, and you've listened to them and you've really liked the person and you've resonated with them and part of them reminds you of you but they're doing better than you in, in your life. And you're kind of thinking, you know, well, how did they do that? And you're kind of admiring that they've come from a, a negative place and then it's made you go, I want to be more like them. And that's a good thing, obviously, in a sense that you want to be a better person. So very positive talk today. Uh, when are the new infill videos coming? Um, I, I think they're coming soon. Um, I am now, um, I have, um, what, what's the word? I'm looking for a new filmmaker. And I've got a friend of mine. He's a former client. He has got in touch with a couple of filmmakers and, and they're going to get back to me this week on whether they can work with me. They're looking at the work that I do. So they will be coming, believe me. There's going to be a really good, probably a good solid hour or two, a really nice uh, in-field approaches and stuff like that. So they are going to be coming. Uh, so just be a bit more patient um what was that so let me guys know if it makes sense so you know i know it can sound a bit like well johnny's talking about 
I'm just assuming he's talking about all this spiritual stuff and, you know, not watching porn and, and not being angry and forgiving people and loving people. But what's this got to do with going out and meeting women on the street? Well, my answer to that, if you are asking me that, it's got everything to do with it. It's got everything to do with it. It all connects. It all relates. Um, because if you're carrying a heavy porn addiction, if you're carrying a tremendous amount of hate and anger towards people or someone that's wronged you in your life, if you're carrying the mindset that women are all out to get me, then when you go and approach women on the street, don't be surprised when they don't want to speak to you. Don't be surprised when you attract women that are going to be more aggressive because you're carrying all that. You're carrying all those demons. You're carrying that negative energy. You're carrying that aggression. And everywhere you go, you'll take it with you because it's, it's inside you. But if you get that aggression out in a positive way, when I mean get out, I don't mean watching porn. I don't mean by uh, fighting with people. I don't mean by going online trolling people. When you get out in a positive way, you will not believe the miracles. You will not believe. You're, you're gonna, you'll just be blown away. Every single one of you on this live stream has 100% got the ability to connect to their inner self and get great results with women. I know it for a fact. I know it because I've done it. And I come from a terrible place. Um, yeah, I do. And, and I've had all those problems which I've openly spoken about. And I'm proud of where I've come from as well because I wouldn't be who I am now and I wouldn't have met great people like yourself and would never have had the... Um, just so grateful for the experiences that I've had with women, just being in loving relationships, having a woman that loved me. I didn't, when I was younger, I had a strong, strong voice. My deep insecurity was no woman would ever love me. Like I'm not good enough. You know, they're not, I'm not attractive. I'm ugly. Now it's that, that's completely changed. So you got to get the ugliness out. Uh, and then, and then it, it starts getting better. So, um, yeah, like porn addictions and stuff like that. All I know after small conversation, I hear no. Please explain that. I didn't understand your question. And um, guys, I'm just going to say something. Don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be scared to ask me questions. The more open you are, the more I can help you. So be brave and, uh, and you know, and, and this is a time to practice kindness. This is a time to practice confidence. Good evening, Johnny. I was inspired and intrigued about something you said a few days ago about the universe rewarding people who face their fears. Do you experience that phenomenon? Most of the time, uh, you push your boundaries. I experience that every single time. And you're right. It, it, it truly amazes me. It makes me go cold. It makes the hairs on, on my neck stand up. That, that phenomenal universal truth and that that's my teaching that's what i discovered and when i say mine i don't own it it's not the johnny berber um it's not mine i don't but it's something that i discovered and i passed it on to people around the world and you're a person who has also discovered it and that is basically another way of you saying that when we do the inner work when we work on our inner self the the universe the outside universe and the inside universe in us it corresponds with us. It rewards us. So when we're when we're being kind to ourselves, and if you're just if you're being kind to your mum or your dad or your brother or your sister or your friend or your clients or your colleagues or your woman, or or online on videos, when you're being like that outwardly, you're treating yourself like that, and then this kindness is coming in. Um, so yeah, um, this truth is phenomenal, phenomenal truth. And there's an opposite effect to that, a negative effect. Um, if you don't face your fears and you keep not facing them, it's almost like the universe punishes you for a lack of courage and then you get bad luck and things don't work out. What do I think are the most difficult aspects of speaking to women in central London? Um, let me think about that.
Well, I've got to be honest. At this moment in time now, um, you're, you're asking me this personally. Um, I kind of, I'll ask your question in, in, in two ways because if you're asking me, I'm going to go. Um, the most difficult part is that it's so abundant that in central London, there are so many beautiful women. There are so many women ready to date you and date me that it's overwhelming in a good way. It's exciting. It's, it's terrifyingly beautiful. That's my honest response to you. That's how I feel and that's where I'm at. But if you're kind of asking the sort of, um, like, um, you know, for most guys that are starting out, I guess that's a different perception. So probably, um, I would probably say for most people, it's fear. The biggest challenge about speaking to an essential London is that people, are, men are fearful to do it. Men, generally men, if they haven't worked on their inner self and they're not matured and grown and, and practiced, they're going to have a very fearful story and that story is going to go something like this. I'm, I'm afraid to approach women in central London because I might be arrested by the police. I'm worried that women might um, shout at me for harassment. Um, I'm afraid to approach a girl in case she turns me down and, and I'm made to feel awkward and feel rejected and that frightens me. I'm afraid to approach a girl in case her boyfriend comes and punches my head in. A very, very negative um, story and that's not my story because of changing and, and experiencing. So let me just make something clear, guys. I'm not saying all this stuff because it sounds cool or it sounds loving or poetic, even though I know it does. It's beautiful to say this. I live this. I have the results. I have the proof of my life. And I teach this. And I've seen the proof of my clients. And I've also seen the anti-proof, the anti-proof in the sense of men who don't believe it. They don't think it's possible. They, another one, another um, story that I want to talk about today. I feel better getting this out myself. A very negative story that a lot of people have is huge skepticism. They don't believe anything. They don't believe that my videos are real. They think that, for example, they think I'm a fraud. They think that um, I'm not genuine. They think that um, I don't get results with women or I've never had a result with women. They think that all of the infill videos are fake, that I've hired out actresses or they're just so skeptical and are so negative and, and pessimistic. But of course, that isn't the truth. It is genuine, and I have got the results in my own life over and over again. And, um, sorry. And um, I have helped um, so many people to get the results. So, um, sorry, my phone is ringing now. So, it's again, if you do the inner work, um, then the skepticism starts going down. And then you start realizing that there's a lot of opportunities. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, people probably, there's always going to be a story. People probably do believe that, that I've hired actresses to get rejected to make guys think that I fell. But again, if you believe that, then that's the story that you're taking on. It's not the truth. So doing the inner work changes your story. And you're able to build the story that you want to build in your life. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's really important. Um, any more questions you've got? Because I'm now I'm just thinking about what else I want to talk about and teach. So just keep me, you know, guys, keep me posted on, is this making sense? Is it inspiring you? Victor Hugo, last Friday I just met a girl. I talked to her a little in my swimming class. Great. Oh, wonderful. You're doing swimming. I'm doing swimming. I, I love swimming. Swimming is so good for getting in touch with yourself. It gets you calm. It's just a great thing. That's nice. Class, but I didn't get uh, the number. Today probably I'm going to see her again and ask her for a number. Isn't it too fast? Um... No, again, you've got to undo that belief. You just ask her out, just ask for the number, have the confidence to ask.
is the awkwardness normal when approaching. Awkwardness is very normal. It's very healthy and it's very genuine. Uh, we all get awkward from time to time in our conversations with people because we're human and we have emotions. So getting awkward isn't a sign that you've got bad inner relationship. Um, it happens to the best of us. It's just being acceptant of it and not judging yourself. Um, and then um, it, sometimes it can actually win you the girl, attract you the girl, because you know a bit of awkwardness comes from sort of genuine genuinity. And just to let you guys know as well, if you want a, a practical program, an online program, I've got a 30-day online anxiety program. It's really cheap. It's only um, it's 39.99. It's less than 40 pounds, and I've sold copies so many. I don't even know the number. It's sold all around the world, and I put a lot of time and effort. I made the program actually in two days, but it took years to get the material. And it is a collection of 20 infill videos of me going out, approaching and breaking down um, everything, how to get into state, how to have conversations, how to compliment. It's really, really good for beginners. So I'll leave you a link here. And if any of you care to buy it and, and use the program, then you're, you're very welcome. Um, anxiety. That's another thing as well. If you do the inner work, your anxiety will start lowering and decreasing. That's what I found myself. You just feel more relaxed around people. You feel, you have a you have a you have a quiet confidence, you know. And I think that's the thing about the inner work. For most people, they don't think it's glamorous. They they gravitate more towards the outer workings because that's what you see. But the inner work's beautiful because. In one aspect, you don't see it. You can't immediately see if someone has been working on their spirit or their heart or their courage, but you can feel it and sense it. And women are very sensitive, as you guys know. So this private work that you do, what you do in private, you do in public. So obviously, this is how sort of the negative, dark shadow and ego works and how it can mess a lot of us up. It will say, well, if I go on porn, no one's going to know about it. My family won't know, friends, women. But in one aspect, they will know because when you're doing those things, you're going to feel like crap after. You're going to feel ashamed. It's going to it's going to trigger more wounds and pain and anger. And then when you go out and start trying to be successful and be a better person in the world, it's it's bullying you and blackmailing you and it's poisoning you. So practice not watching it, and then then people will sense, oh, there's a positivity about him. He's more loving. He's more there's a there's a um, a specialness so yeah that's a good point yeah a lot of people are skeptical because the successes are few and far between relative to the amount of time and that's something very truthful but i like that truth and a lot of my successful entrepreneurial friends, they love that truth as well. I didn't used to like it. And sometimes I don't like it. But when you do the inner work, you love that truth. Because what you're really saying is people don't want to do the work. They don't want to put the work in to get successful because it's too intimidating for them. They don't want to look at their jealousy. They don't want to look at the anger that they have towards themselves and people. They don't want to look at the dishonesty in themselves. They don't want to look at their negative addictions. I don't want to look at things that they've done that have made them ashamed or they let themselves down. I don't want to look at the part of them that don't respect their mum or their dad or their brother or who is aggressive. So then they get frustrated when the success doesn't come. But if they looked at all that stuff and done it, the success would come like that. And that's totally true. If you enjoy the process, there's no failure. You know, there's, there's no failure. It's all success, which is why in my videos, I'm not saying every video, because not every video is perfect, but in a lot of videos, because I'm very consistent in who I am, and I, and I try to be the best version of myself and be as honest as I possibly can with people in the videos that I'm putting out, with you guys, you'll notice a guy who's really enjoying talking to women, whether, he, whether I get the number or not. And most times I do, sometimes I don't, but I'm just loving and caring in every approach. Every woman's getting treated the same. And I think that's what, 
a lot of people like and I like, and it, and it shocks some people. They just don't get it. They're going, why is Johnny smiling when a girl didn't give him um, her phone number out? But what I'm trying to say is I don't need the phone number. The phone number is secondary. Uh, the date is secondary. Getting laid is secondary. What I'm about is me going over and being genuine and connecting or trying to connect. Um, and that, and the act of doing it, that's winning. So um, there you go. How many of you generally enjoy cold approach though? Is that a question to the rest of the group? That's a good question. People can answer that. I can generally say I enjoy it. I love it. Let me ask you guys a question because you are asking me questions. How many of you know what I'm talking about already? Deep down, you know it already in your own heart. How many of you know that you've got to do this self-work on yourself to get the results? Plus one, EA. Okay, that's good. Tell the truth, guys. And, you know, be honest. If some of you don't get it, say how many of you, um, let's see how, let's see if we've got some honesty here. How many of you are getting angry by what I'm saying? Is it triggering any of you? Is it upsetting you? Is it making you feel ashamed? Are you getting angry at me? Is it annoying you? Is it something you don't want to hear? Tell the truth. What's it bringing up for you? Because if you can be truthful about that to me, then you can get great results with women. If you can be truthful about what you're ashamed of, then you're, then you won't be ashamed. You go to another level. So we're practicing self honesty here, communication. I had a guy yesterday, I appreciated it. He wrote on my um, live stream, I'm getting angry because you won't ask him answer my question. And I spoke to him about you know, learning to be more patient. Then I answered his question and then we, we were both you know, kind to one another. And then he said, yeah, he, he realized that he doesn't want to be angry towards me. And I, I said, no problem. And, and I told him that as a very good character that he's developing. Because um, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with feeling angry or getting angry, but not staying there. Okay, let, let's go. I'm going to go where the conversations are going. You guys are kind of kicked off. This is good. And, yeah, it's really nice that you guys are speaking about just the fact that you're speaking about enjoying the process means that you guys are definitely doing some inner work, which is great. You are, you are practicing um, improving yourself. And if you, in, if you just go out, let me just explain something. Really simple truth. It goes very deep and very, very simple, but difficult for a lot of men mentally and emotionally. If you enjoy the process of speaking to women, you've won already. You've not been rejected. You're not abandoned. You're not, not good enough. You're good enough. You're connected. Because that enjoyment will 100% at some point, whether it's quickly or a few weeks or a month, that will get you a beautiful girl. That will get you the number. That will get you an amazing um, sexual um, connection. It will, it will get you a friendship. It, it will heal you. It will get you that. If you can generally enjoy it, you'll have abundance. As soon as you're enjoying it, you, you immediately you, you've accessed abundance. Immediately you're connected to who you are. Because when we're enjoying it, what you're really saying is you're loving women. That's why you enjoy it, because you love them. You, you, you appreciate that, and you love yourself. You enjoy you. You enjoy talking to them. Does it make sense? So it is in an, it is inward and outward. You're enjoying talking to them, which is a practical thing. That's external. You're going out on the street talking to women. They're enjoying it because you're enjoying it, that good, confident, positive energy. And inside, you're experiencing good emotions and a good state. That is the essence and the truth of what I teach men, how to meet and attract women, to approach them in the right way. And that doesn't qualify with what line to say. It's the place that you come from. So well done. Some people go football on Saturday. I go out um, approaching. Yeah, you're right. That's it. Great. What you're basically saying is everyone finds their own way of enjoyment. And that's true. Johnny, I lost my hopes of getting laid. I've always seen to be in limbo or just compliments. Little conversations. I never get a date. I haven't got laid in a long time now. 
I'm going to be really honest with you, and you might not like to hear this, and I want to help you. It sounds to me like you're being a bit of a victim. And I understand your feelings, and of course I felt how you felt, and I've said the things you said, but you've got to stop feeling sorry for yourself because a woman won't sleep with you because she feels sorry for you, and that ain't good for you. So do more inner work. Look at that part of you that is saying this story that, you know, you never get laid. If you keep saying that, you won't get laid. If you change the story and go, actually, okay, I haven't got laid yet, and I want to get laid, and I want to meet a woman, but let me be grateful for what I have got. And I'm sure you've you've already said, and then it will happen for you. So you've got to learn to appreciate yourself more, not be a victim. That's your inner practice. I guarantee if you practice that, your results of women are going to change. So something in you needs to change for you to get the woman. So today we're talking about inner work, changing yourself. And that, listen, when I say that, that doesn't mean you've got to change your whole personality. It doesn't mean you've got to move country. It doesn't mean you've got to you know, change, you know, have surgery on your face. It, it means you just got to change some aspects of you, you know, uh, and that's uh, so inspiring. I like the questions, guys. They're, they're very honest. They're a lot more um, loving and stronger than the live streams that I've done several months ago. So you guys are improving. You're definitely growing. But I also know that you could do way more. You could grow more. Yeah, that's a good point as well. Of course, you do need to read the signs. And reading the signs is awareness, intelligence, being emotionally engaged when you're speaking to women. And just getting more, you know, when I first started talking to women, I was a bit aloof. I was a bit, well, I was very socially awkward. And I wasn't, I was a little bit out and a bit strange because of, I was nervous. But with more practice, I started to read the signs and, and sense them. Uh, and, and, and that helps as well. And quite a lot of you've been speaking about that. You've mentioned that on my last live stream about reading science. So, um, yeah, you know, just um, practice. Uh, I did say, um, Les Boss, that one of my practices and one of my rules is i'm not being difficult here I don't really speak about other dating coaches on my live streams and that's not because i'm being um uh funny it's just i want to stick to uh being positive because sometimes when we start talking about other people we start going into drama and then finding things to criticize them about so all i'm going to say is what i've always said I've got a massive respect and appreciation for any coach or anyone who's out there teaching and helping people making a difference. But right now, I'm not interested in this moment of speaking about any of them because this is my time to teach and talk. Of course, you guys already know it. You're free and you're welcome to learn from other teachers um, because, the, you know, obviously other teachers have got great things to say and teach you. And you can learn from them and you can learn from me. There's, I've got no problem, but I'm not going to go into speaking about them. I'm going to stick to what today's lesson is about. Are parks better, girls sitting down? Now, I'm just going to give my opinion and say, at the moment, I think parks are the best. Obviously, I, I you're welcome, man, and I appreciate your understanding. Um, I mean, I'm always going to love the street because that's close to my heart. That's where I first started. And I had a lot of results, and not just me, so many students have succeeded from the street. But I love parks. Parks, if you're quite sensitive and emotional and quite introverted and maybe you don't like big groups and you just want to kind of get on go, get on with it and connect with a girl, parks are the best. Is it too late for people who are past their 30? 100% no. Past 30 is so young. I mean, I'm, I'm 35. It isn't too late for me. I met a beautiful girl um, who's just turned, she's 31. She was 30 when I met her. And I, I, I work in with, uh, work with a client who's 50. It, it's, I've got to be honest with you, mate, and, and I'm not being nasty or, or anything. It's quite a ridiculous question to ask. You know, 
you're not 70 or 80. It's young. Um, and 40 is young. I, I can't wait to be 40. I want to be amazing. And 50 is young. So come on, talk sense. And I think you know deep down. I'm not sure your question you've had, was that YouTube videos? Okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. You guys are talking to much of that's That's nice. Good to see you guys helping each other out. So um, today's talk, for anyone who's just come on it, I'm talking about how to develop your inner self, how to get in touch with it. And in doing so, the consequences are attracting women. So you can do it either way. You can set your ambitions, your goals, and your purpose uh, towards improving your dating life and your confidence, your relationships with women. And, and in doing that, that will touch on your inner self. Or you can go even deeper, which is something I personally prefer to do now. I get better results. And uh, a lot of the clients I work with like this work. Not all of them. Some of them don't want to go as deep. But for those of you that do, if you go inside here and work on inside in your psyche and your habits and your addictions, you will get incredible results of women. And what I find is the more inner work you do, you don't have to do loads of approaches. It's more quality, not quantity. Um, so instead of playing the massive numbers game, and again, that's I'm not saying that's bad. That's still better than doing nothing. But it's almost like, yeah, you just have more more quality. You know, you might have to, you might speak to only one woman when you go out, or two, and then and then you'll get a really good connection. No, it's not true. In parks, I've found there's an abundant amount of women, and that's a general stereotype that parks are quiet and there's only like two old people with their dogs, and and, and it isn't like that. Not in the parks in London, they're packed. I've been in the park today in St. James's Park, full of beautiful women, loads. Hyde Park, um, there's loads, man. Uh, remember, guys, to, um, yeah, I was going to say that, Joe. I was going to go targets, not the best language to use. Um, calling women targets, I think that's that's not that's not great. That's not great integrity. Uh, yeah, women are allowed on on the live stream. That they are allowed. You are welcome. Even though today I'm I'm speaking to men, but the truths that I'm speaking about. They help women as well. So you're welcome. And listen, guys, if there's any women that are on the live stream, uh, please be respectful and kind and make them feel welcome. So if you just come onto the live stream and you're a woman, and I'm basically talking today about improving your life by working on your inner self. And obviously, it's not only men that have an inner self. Um, <laughs> Johnny Burb is the John McLean. Women have an inner self. And I was thinking the other day about doing some videos for women as well because I get a lot of women um, messaging me on Facebook, Instagram and personally emailing me saying that my videos have inspired them and helped them with, with their own fears. How to deal with insecure uh, man. Well, go a little bit deeper into that. That question is a little bit vague. Uh, I need to really know what the problem is. It sounds like you're dating someone who's insecure or, or you like someone. So tell me a little bit more and I can answer your question better. Royal Parks are good in the summer. All the parks in London are good. You've got Hyde Park. You've got St. James's Park. You've got Green Park. You've got Regent's Park. You've got Hampstead Heath. Beautiful. Someone who is not secure in his masculinity. Well, I suppose the question we have to ask is, 
does he want to be more masculine or is it your frustration that you want him to be masculine and he can't be that way towards you and that you want a guy who is masculine i'm trying to get to the truth of what your question is if a guy is not masculine um but he's not masculine because he's afraid to be masculine and, and he's he has fears but he wants to be he has to want to do make those changes uh, to become more masculine. And I've worked with guys many times and coached them, and and they're very effeminate, and they want to. Um, okay, he is very masculine. All right, well that, that's good. What do I think of affirmations? They're very good, but not if they're used to escape facing fear. Because a lot of people do affirmations in the mirror. And then they go around and they hate and judging everyone and they're wondering why they're not getting results. So the affirmations are good, but you've got to practice it. But gets threatened by other men's masculinity. Okay, so we're talking about jealousy here. Are you talking about a man who is masculine but is a bit insecure, a bit jealous, or a bit paranoid? I know all about that. I used to be like that myself. I, mean, I changed that and I've helped a lot of guys. Yes, jealous and insecure. Okay, actually, it's really great that we've got a, a female on the chat because it's inspired something that I that's very important in today's talk. So a, a lot of men um, suffer with psychotic jealousy and insecurity. Um, and like I said, every man's got that in him. I've got that in me as well. That's a shadow. That's an insecure part. Um, but you can change it. And there's two ways that you can change it. First is you have to be aware of it. You have to be honest about it. You have to not be ashamed. You have to say, yes, I get very jealous. I'm jealous when I go out with my girlfriend or I'm jealous in relationships or I'm jealous of other people doing better than me and it makes me insecure. That's halfway overcoming it. The second one is, do you want to be a jealous person? Do you want to be insecure? And if you don't want to be, you stop feeding it. So when these feelings of jealousy and insecurity come up like a story and emotions, you watch it and you watch it as if it is a person that is not you, separate. And then eventually you start to become less jealous. And then you, you work on loving yourself more. You face your fears in your life. And, and as you develop more confidence, the jealousy starts. That's what happened to me. I was very jealous years ago. I was jealous of other men. I was threatened by other men. I used to get into lots of fights with other men. And then when I worked on my confidence and started succeeding with women and, and life and teaching people and success, that jealousy just completely started to go. And I felt more secure in groups around men. I didn't mind if there was a guy in a club getting the girl and I wasn't because I knew I had the confidence to do it myself. So the inner work, like you've spoken today, you guys have got to look at your jealousy. If you want to attract a beautiful woman, or you want to do well in your life, you need to look at that and you need to address it. Um, because if you don't, it's going to be sabotaging you. Listen, I'm going to just go deeper here. You guys are always talking about where are good places to meet women. Uh, and the real truth is, if you're in a good place, then most of the places you go will be good to meet women. So parks would be great. The street, high streets, coffee shops, museums, hotels, um, so many different places. But you've got to change the mindset because if you go into these environments and you're carrying negative stories and you're thinking it ain't going to work out, then it ain't going to work out. But have you guys noticed today in girls what I'm saying is very challenging to the ego. The ego doesn't want to hear this stuff. It doesn't want to admit to this because that's how it survives. But if you're really hungry for this and you want to grow and you want to succeed, then you will like this work. I love the inner work. Well, I don't read local newspapers, so I don't read those stories because I know what you're going to get. Most of it's negativity and drama. And it's going to make you feel afraid and, and depressed. So I don't read them. That's one of my disciplines. I spoke about on the last live stream, guys, about practicing discipline. If you want to be successful with women or, or anything, 
in life, you have to practice being disciplined. You have to practice the discipline to not watch porn. You have to practice the discipline to not go online and start trolling people and getting angry all the time. And, um, you know, and drinking too much alcohol, taking too much drugs, and then you become more aligned. And then you attract better things. So we're going to finish up in the, in the next few minutes. I feel like I've, I've said everything that I wanted to say. I've really enjoyed it. Last couple of questions, and then, and then we're going to call it a day, and um, I'll do another live stream another day. And this has been really good. And I've gave you a lot of things to work on, and a lot of um, all the things that have helped me to get success and that I teach other people. Yeah, I'm going to keep the live streams going, no problem. Remember as well, if you're new to the channel and you like the videos, you like what I'm talking about and teaching, make sure you subscribe, share the videos with a friend, leave a comment, uh, and then I can make more, more videos and help you more. And come on to the next live stream. And just check regularly on the channel because you'll see the times that I've, I'm going to do a live stream. And I usually do them in the evening around 7, 8, half 8. All right, it feels like it's time. I'm going to end it here, guys. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, that's a lot of stuff to work on. Um, so practice it and then see the results you get. So thanks for coming on the stream. I enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. And, um, you know, put these things into practice and, and see what kind of results you're going to get. It's life-changing, all right? Enjoy the process, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.